Hi everybody and welcome to our first video on how to make a project using the Torchmate CAD CAM program. In this video we're going to be looking at the project shape and kind of how to develop that. So before we get started let's do a quick look at our screen since it's the first time we've actually worked with the program. Um, a few of the parts here, these are the majority of the tools that you're going to be using. Your screen may be configured slightly different. Um, most of the time from default those tools will end up on the left side some programs will have this set there some won't I don't use these anyways I usually like to work up here or even better I prefer to use shortcuts uh, the keyboard shortcuts, so I don't have to um, flip through here and try to find so if you ever needed to know what the shortcuts were uh, for example make a path you can see it's control H my preference is to work with those I just find it faster rather than going through these and trying to find my grouping. Oh, there it is, Control G. Yes. Um, in addition to those, uh, the tools and these, uh, these um, icons up here, we also have kind of the layout of the, the workspace. Now, I, again, I'm not sure if the download is going to default to 48 by 48. That's what mine is set for right now. So 4 feet by 4 feet or 48 inches by 48 inches. And my preference is to work with that because I have a machine that is the the 4x4 growth series, the Torchmate 4x4 growth series, and it can only cut up to a four foot piece of steel anyways, so I always work within those parameters. So you might want to set your program up to match whatever um, project, you, whatever your machine is capable of, but in reality it doesn't really matter what, you, what this is set at. Okay. Um, now what I'd like to look at, oh yeah, while you're looking at this screen here, you can zoom in and you can zoom out and you can move around. So when you're zooming in, just roll the scroll button. Of course you can use those bars to move around it is one way to move around. Um, but with the scroll button, if you push the scroll button in, that allows you to move the screen around however you want. If you roll the wheel on the mouse, now you're messing around with your zoom. So roll it up, it zooms in, roll it out, it zooms out or roll it down it zooms out sorry and so I would push that and I always like to work with it center but you can do whatever you want another thing that I tend to do is I, I tend to put stuff I'm not working with I keep it on the outer extremity so I usually aren't zoomed in completely like this I'll have my main project in here but other things I'm working with I'll keep out here saving them for later on in my um, project whatever I'm working on alright so let's get started with making a shape for our project we're going to start with the basic shape. So if you go along the left hand side here, there's the shape tools and there's several different ones here from um, circles, squares, this arrow thing. Choose whatever shape it is you're going to work with. So let's start with just a rectangle. So after you select the tool or the shape, you're going to go into your screen, click somewhere to start, drag it and end it. At this point you could type in right away whatever measurement you want that to be. So let's say I want that square rectangle to be 24 inches. I'm going to go 24. Of course I'm going to turn my number lock on for some reason it's off. And I want its height. So again I know that's that's the length of it just by that little line there that's going horizontal and this line that's vertical. I want that to be 16 inches. There. With that I then just going to click on this arrow over here and it kind of sets the block then for me. So now my block is exactly 24 by 16. If you were to just let's redo that again we're gonna just make a random size again there we go and click on it automatically so we can start with that size and we can adjust it after we've the initial setup I'm gonna just leave this blank right now because it's probably more common how you're gonna see it it's if I have my my rectangle already set up, and but it's not the exact size I want, I can modify it now. So all I'd want to do is just highlight it, and all I did to highlight it is click on it, it turns red, and now I can modify the size. So I'm going to change that size to 30, I'm going to change that length, but I want you to watch what happens to my height when I do that. As soon as I change that to 30, all of a sudden my height automatically changed. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to keep a proportion of what my original shape was. So if I wanted that original rectangle shape, it'll keep a proportion. It might not make a lot of sense with dealing with the rectangles and stuff, but as soon as you start working with images or text or things like that, 
it's going to be important that you keep things proportionate. You can make objects look really weird if you stretch them up too tall and there should be kind of a, a, a width to them. So to avoid that from happening, that is controlled by this lock button here. So you can lock and unlock. When it's locked, that means it's going to maintain the aspect ratio. It's going to maintain the proportions. If I unlock it, now what I can do is I can change these individually. So I can change this to 20 and it's not going to affect that 30. I can change this to 24, it's not going to affect that 20. And so you can set it for whatever you want. All right, so we're set back to the size that I wanted, 24 by 16. I'm just going to lock that just because I forget to do that quite often. I like to, I myself like to work with it locked. You can work with it any way you want though. All right, so the other thing that you're going to find as soon as you've selected an object is it's going to talk about how you're controlling that object. And again, this is my preference. I like to, whenever I work with a CNC plasma cutter, I always like to work in this bottom left corner. When I work with a CNC router, I always like to work from the center. Um, and that's because usually with the, the router, you're putting the object onto a board. With the CNC plasma, usually we're cutting it out of. So my preference is to work from the bottom left. And so what that refers to is it's going to take my object and whenever I adjust the X, Y position of it, which is where it's located on the screen in relation to my plate of steel here, the, my 4x4. Um, it's how it's going to control it. What, what number am I trying to control it by? So I like to work with this because what it does is put my 0 down in this bottom left corner of the plate. So if I want to move my object all the way to the left, that's going to be the X. So my X is running horizontal, my Y is running vertical, and this is what I mean. So if I type in 0 here to X, you can see it shovels that all the way over to the left. If I type this in to 0, it's going to drop it all the way down. So the 0 point, the X, Y location, 0, 0, is located in that bottom left corner, and that's why I like to work there, because I always have a good... Um, uh, idea of where I'm positioning it. And, and, I, and again, that doesn't really matter until you're completely done the drawing. So I usually don't even look at that until I'm done my project and I'm ready to set it up for, for a cut. And we'll talk about that when that time comes. Alright, so there's one shape. As you saw, there's other shapes here. So the same thing will happen. You'll, you'll draw it, you'll lay it out, it'll give you some of the details again. So now it's asking me for the radius of it. Maybe I want a 20 in circle, so I'll type in a radius of 10, and I'll get that. Maybe um, you get confused working with diameters and radiuses. Well, you can just set it and then highlight it, and you can adjust the size here. So now you can adjust it to 24 inches, and of course, because it's locked, it's going to maintain that, that aspect ratio. So again, if it was unlocked, it's going to look a little bit goofy as all of a sudden I make a circle, but perhaps that's what you're after. Maybe you want that oval shape. Whatever the case is, um, that is how you make those changes. So there's our basic shapes. I'm not going to go through all of them with you. You can play around with them now that you see how to modify them and work with them. What I am going to do with you though is let's look at combining them. So sometimes our shapes will require some irregularities. Uh, actually, you know what, before I do that, I'm going to take you back one second and show you a little tip because I'll probably forget this later on. Uh, when you make the rectangle and you go like that, and remember we were setting up our measurements here, there is one more option for modifying rectangles right off the get-go. If you grab it by one of these corners here, you see you can pull it in and you can adjust what, if you want to put a, a nice little design on there, you can adjust that design. Um, adjust the corners just to get a little bit of a fancier look for it. So that's a really quick, easy way. It's a lot longer to set that up after the fact. So if you do that right off the get-go, you're in a lot better shape. Okay, back to what I was saying here. Let's set up a little drawing. And what I'm going to do here is combine a couple shapes together. So I've got a circle. I'm going to draw another circle. And Let's get some sizes. So I'm going to set this one to, again, 24 inches. That should be a good size for that. And this one, I don't know, let's try 10 inches. That's a bit small. I'm going to go a bit bigger. 13, sure. Okay, so 
I what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the Mickey Mouse head. And I want to make two circles the exact same. I could do that twice and just redraw another circle that was 13. Another way I can do that is duplicate it. Um, the shortcut for duplicate is Control D. If you want to just do it the old school way, under Edit, you'll see Duplicate, and then it'll just remake it. So it, the the free, free version, the student version, doesn't really have a, a copy-paste option. The master version does, so I'm used to working in that one, but it, and it's it's really nice to work with, especially for putting in images. But in this case, with the student version here, it doesn't have that option, so you have to use the duplicate thing instead. So all you do is highlight the object you want, hit Control D, and it'll make an identical one to what you just had. All right, so I'm going to start with laying these out nice and evenly, and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the grid. So up under Options, there's Grid. I'm going to start snapping things to grid, and in the future I'm just going to use the shortcut. You'll see it says Control W there. That I'm going to use that. So right now I'm just going to select that. Now what's going to happen is when I grab one of these points, one of these ends, or I grab that center point, it's going to snap to where the grid is. Now it depends on how you want to set your grid up. Um, if you want to change your grid setting, you're under Torchmate, General Preferences here, and here's your grid size. So you, you can set it for whatever you want. Let's go this is a fairly large object, so let's just go two inches by two inches. And you can change that throughout the drawing as well. You might find it easier. You might need some quarter inch measurements. So then I would change the grid to quarter inches. Right now, this is going to be just fine. So this will help me kind of get these things um, centered exactly where I want them. In which case, I'm, I'm basically going to, I want to put this ear matching where this ear, I want these two ears to be at the exact same height, same place in relation to this. So I'm going to do that old school way, I'm just going to count it out. I can see that this grid line is the very edge of it, and this grid line is the very top of it. So from the edge, let's line up the center with that edge, and line up the center with that edge. And we'll do the exact same thing here. So I'll take this one here. So I'm lining up that edge, I'm going to follow up that grid space, and I'm going to take that one, line them up, and place it there. So you can do this multiple times with all kinds of different shapes. I could add on um, whatever I wanted to, if I wanted to add a little piece in like that, whatever you want to do. You, you, your imagination is your hold up here. So for now, but you, this should just give you an idea. Now that I have those objects all laid out, I got to make them into one so that it's going to end up looking like that. All I was doing there was hitting Alt S, which just gives me an idea about what it looks like when it's filled. Um, so with these objects now, let's put them together. And how we do that is we weld them. So I, any objects I want to put together, I highlight them. So those aren't touching, so that wouldn't work. But let's say I just wanted two of those ears and not all three. So when I selected, you'll notice I didn't have that one all the way in. So it only grabbed the things that were in my selection box. So I want to grab all objects, or you could hit Control A. And then I'm going to hit this little weld tool here. It gives us a few options. This one on the left is the one we're going to be using for this step. So just hit that basic weld. And you can see what it's done. It's now taken those three objects and turned them into one. If I hit my Alt S, my fill button, there's my object, my nice Mickey Mouse head, and I now have a shape for my sign by combining shapes together. All right, so let's make, let's do another one. And yeah, it, we're just gonna cut that off. So I'm just, I highlighted and deleted there. We are gonna make another sign. I'm just gonna grab a rectangle for this one. There we go. So you can see it's snapping to those two inch increments I made now. All right, so with this, now what we'd like to do, let's say we wanted to modify this shape to do a certain thing. Um, an easy way to do that is to use the what's, what's called the nodes on it. And if you're looking at nodes, uh, sorry, I don't change this very, here we go. Under arrange, you'll see there's convert to. When we get to nodes, I'll talk about this more. 
but I just want you to understand that there's two types of nodes. There's polygon and there's poly arc. 100% of the time I like working in poly arc. So lots of times I end up converting all drawings to poly arc. However, usually when you make it make an object, the program's going to default to poly arc anyways. So to get it so that it's easy to work with with nodes cuz after I've set it, you'll see I'll try and highlight it and I'm going to get back to this screen here where it lets me do that, but that's not what I want to do here. I want to work with nodes. So in order for that to happen with objects that we've placed, so that circle or oval or anything you make, you need to turn this so that it'll have nodes in it and how you do that is by making a path. So to make a path, if you go up to arrange, control H, you hit make path and the object isn't going to look like it changes at all, but what it's doing is it's basically telling us that we are making this a solid piece of steel that is going to be cut out. Okay, so now when I double click on it, you'll see instead of getting that those uh, hollow circles, I'm getting these blue dots, and those are what we refer to as nodes. And you'll notice now I have a little pencil. What that pencil is going to do is it's going to let me uh, add nodes. The hand is going to let me modify the lines in between the nodes. So for example, um, and this is how poly arc works. So with poly arc, any any line in between nodes you can grab with the hand and you can turn an arch on it. So you can extend it to make that arch. So if you wanted that just to become a little shape like this here, we're going to pull that end out, we'll pull that end out. There we have it. And if you wanted to return it, just swing it back in. Of course you could hit control um, U to undo that as well. Uh, Alright, so now what we want to do is add some nodes into this. Let's say we needed a notch in it. This was a plate, a custom made plate that's got to fit around something. Um, there's a bolt here, something that's going to be in the way so we can't bolt this plate completely down. So what we'd want to do is add a node. So if you go onto the line, and again this is where it's your grid is going to matter. If you have it, your grid on, it's going to automatically snap to the closest grid intersection. Sometimes that'll be good for you to have the grid on, sometimes it won't. Again, to toggle between that, just hit your control W and it'll let you leave it. So after doing um, a node there, a quick way that I like to modify is I like to add as many nodes as I'm going to need to do whatever it is I'm doing. So in this case, I need four nodes to be able to make a notch. I need a, And everywhere I change directions, I need a node. So now what I can do is my first node yeah, I didn't want to grab that. My first node, I'm going to grab I'm going to select on it just by clicking on top of it and I'm going to move it to the position I want. So I want it 2 inches from the edge. I'm going to grab my second node, click on it. I'll drag it over and drop it in the right spot. Here's my third node. Move it there. Good. And then I'll just hit that arrow up there and that locks everything in position. So now I have this this large no um, notch if I needed it. You can also move multiple nodes at a time. So all, you, all you'd have to do is highlight all the nodes you want to move, drag it over, and there. There's my little notch now. Alright, so that's modifying with nodes, and you, you can modify in lots of different ways. It's, again, just your imagination is what's going to determine what you do here. So if I want to put an angle on it, I'll grab those two, I'll select that one, I'll hit delete, and now I have an angle on there. And this is how you can also set up those arches as saying. So like that original um, object, how you had the arches at each corner, and this is why I mean it's a lot more work doing it this way. But but uh, maybe you don't want it at all four ob corners, and so that other option doesn't let you do that. So this would be another way of doing so. But I just want it straight. There. Okay, so you can put um, you can take the corners off like what I've done there. You could add things to the corners um, by adding shapes on there and just laying them over top. But as far as adjusting the shape of your, your project with nodes, that is how you're going to do that. All right, and I'll lock that in place. Now we're going to move on to using shapes to do this. So if I'm going to go to, I've already done uh, a look for one. You'll have to do a search for your own shape, whatever you want. 
But right now I'm just going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to grab this wrench that I found earlier. And then I'm just going to click anywhere on the screen and it's going to drop it for me. So there's a little shape. That could be a nice sign you're going to put in the garage or something like that. Don't touch my tools, write it on there and cut it out just like that. Done. Super simple. A lot faster to take an object. When it's complicated like this, it's a lot faster to take the object and just modify it as you need to. So you can see there I grab this little arrow and I can rotate it. You can do that at any point. Um, you don't have to do that right now. So let's say I paste it in here. Now I'm going to turn this into something I can work with. I'll have a separate video on how to do this more in depth, but uh, I'll just do the very basic how to take the object and make it so that we can make a sign out of it. First of all, the object choice, which I'll also have a video on how to choose objects on um, and pictures on Google searches. Looking at this one right here, you can see we just have a, uh, a plain old black wrench. So I did a wrench clip art search and silhouette is another word you can use. But ideally, right now, let's look at something really basic, just a single color that is very easy for us to copy then. So in my search, find something simple. Now I highlight it. I'm going to come over here and go to the scan tool. And I'm going to choose this one on the left, this AccuScan. This should be set for complex with detail. I think that's the default anyways, and that's the one I always work with. And if that doesn't do it, usually the other ones aren't much success. Anyways, then I'll move over to this little icon called vectorization. I'll click on that, and then I can click closed. And what it's done is it's it's redrawn the object based on what it could tell. That's why it was important that we had an object that was um, solid black and the background was clear. So it's easy for the computer to tell the difference, easy for the program to tell the difference between the object you want and what you don't want. So after I vectorized it, it traced it. Here's the trace. I'll put that back to where it was. This is how it usually will show up. So I usually highlight on top just by clicking it. Just click once on top grab the top layer, I pull it out of the way before I delete it, and now I look at the object. Does it look like it traced pretty good? Yeah, it does. So now I can go ahead and just delete that object. I'll just hit delete, and it's gone. Now I have my wrench shape. So there's my wrench, and that's a little bit small, so I'm going to grab it diagonally here, and I'm going to stretch it out so we have a larger project to work with, and there's an image that we've turned into a shape of a sign. The last thing, this is a little bit more advanced, the last thing we're going to look at for designing a shape is we are going to go and copy an existing image. Um, so a really good example of where you would use this is, I'm going to just open it up here, is this rock. So I grabbed a rock here. Let's say a customer came up to you and they have this nice little rock in their front yard and they want you to build a sign for it with their name on it and stuff and they want it to be the full size of the rock or whatever they want to follow just the top half of it or something but they want it to kind of keep the shape of the rock so what I would do is I would get them to take a photo of the irregular shape and make sure that it is perfectly straight on so you have kind of that two two dimensional view of it this one isn't perfectly straight on but we'll get we'll get the idea here and you can just take that image, save it, put it into the program, and then we're going to draw over top of it. <clears throat> so for this, I'm going to shut off that grid. Definitely want to shut off my snap to grid, because this is going to be very random how I'm doing it. So again, Control W will do that. And I'm going to select this graphic editor tool. This one right here. So that very first one, so which lets me make a continuous line with my um, pencil and I, I'm just going to do this all as one shot. So I'm going to start in the bottom left corner. Now let's say the customer wanted it just a few inches off the ground so I'm just going to estimate where that is. We're trying to match up a rock here so it, we're, we're not expecting this to follow it absolutely perfect. Which here's a something I can do for you really quick. Why don't we just take that and vectorize it? Um, so when I scan that you can see what happens to it when I scan it it doesn't leave us a great image to work from. And the reason for that is because, remember I talked about how we wanted to make sure that the object object we selected was um, 
had had just a black one. I was talking about that wrench. It was just pure black and a pure white background. That makes it easy for the program to copy. When colors mesh together, it's very difficult for it to copy. And so it's not usually an option. If they could put the object on, if they could recreate kind of that dark forefront and a light background where it was distinct between the two, then actually you probably could get away with vectorizing a photo. I have done it before. Um, actually with someone's tattoo, they wanted a, a decal made from their tattoo. So uh, we took a picture of their tattoo, but their skin, it was very dark compared to their skin. And so there was a good distinction between the two and we were able to vectorize it. It wasn't perfect. I had to fix quite a bit of it, but it still gave me a really good start. All right, so here's my object. Now let's get back to business here. I'm going to, everywhere I want my sign to go or my um, outline, I'm going to just put another node. So I'll just follow the outline shape of this and get it exactly how I want. You can do as many nodes as you want or as few nodes as you want. Depends on what kind of shape you're going for. So I'm just going to click, click, click. And I can see that that's the edge, so I'm going to just stay away from there and I probably would have just gone right to there. Okay, so now what I have, I'm gonna hit this. There's the, sh the, the shape of the rock, roughly. And again, I, if someone's putting a photo on the rock and they want it to follow the edges, most likely they're not gonna be concerned that it's perfect anyways, so as long as we have the approximate size and shape, we'd be good for that. So then all you'd want to do is find out the exact measurement of that rock. So how tall is that rock from top to bottom if they told you it was 48 inches? And then what you would do is you would know that, okay, so I have a, a basis for this. I'm just going to take this whole thing there um, and probably would have made this picture 48 right off the get-go. So that background should have been 48 inches tall there and so then essentially that rock now should be well technically my picture is 48 but hopefully you get the idea I want to just make sure that I've made that rock 48 inches so that my cutout is going to be um, proportionally the right size even though because the photo is going to be a lot smaller than the actual rock is going to be so doing this would give you a proportionate sh shape and the proper size to um, making the object and that pretty much completes how to make your shape. And I know that was a very long-winded with a lot of different options, but again, hopefully what you see, uh, what you learn is that there are many different ways to do this. You are limited just by your imagination, and if you uh, want to, you, you're not going to start with complicated drawings like making this rock and making it from scratch. Start with basic stuff, simple shapes, and work your way up from there. But if you take the skills you just learned here with adjusting nodes, um, rotating things, locking, unlocking, using the grid system to help you organize um, how it's going to be laid out, then you will, you pretty much can do any shape anyone ever asks of you. Okay, um, I'm going to stop right there and we will proceed with the next um, video. We're going to look at finding um, images and adding them to the drawing. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.